Do you have excessive gas? Pain, cramps, or a feeling of bloating? That's the topic of today's video, how to get rid of gas or bloating. I'll also talk about when gas is considered excessive, the main causes, and why some gas smells worse than others. So, pay attention. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't to avoid missing our health tips. And tell me, do you suffer from excessive gas or bloating? Do you want to improve this? Where are you from? Right below. Let's get started. How is gas formed? In two ways, the normal digestion process and swallowing air. The digestion process forms gas especially by the bacteria in the large intestine that help digest food. Anaerobic bacteria form methane gas, and aerobic bacteria form carbon dioxide. Depending on what you ate, sulfur and other gases may also form. But it's not just the bacteria. When you swallow air by eating quickly, drinking, talking while eating, chewing gum, smoking, or drinking soda, the air can continue through the digestive tract with the food or return and be expelled through the mouth as a burp. So, gas is the result of what you eat and how you eat. Not everyone will get gas from the same foods. How much gas does our body produce on average? Normally, an adult eliminates about 14 to 20 gases per day, and up to 25 times is considered normal. It's a common occurrence but it can often be embarrassing or painful. What foods are more likely to cause gas? Beans. They are extremely nutritious and have soluble fibers that can lower cholesterol. But excessive gas production, sometimes with the added discomfort of bloating, is why many people avoid eating beans. Beans contain carbohydrates that our digestive system cannot break down because we lack an enzyme called alpha-galactosidase. This also applies to lentils, peas, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower. Since we can't digest them, fermentation occurs. On the one hand, it's good for health, but on the other, it forms gases and often smelly ones. An interesting tip for beans is to soak them in water overnight, then drain the water, rinse, and cook in fresh water, which can reduce oligosaccharides and gas production. Using a pressure cooker also reduces gas even more. Other foods besides beans. Legumes like broccoli, cabbage, and onion. Fruits containing sorbitol like plums, pears, apples, and peaches. Dairy, especially if you are lactose intolerant. Whole grains. Soda. Processed foods. Artificial sweeteners. Proteins and fats tend to cause less gas than carbohydrates. Some proteins like eggs can make gas smell stronger. As you may have noticed, several foods broccoli, onion, whole grains are important for a healthy diet. Should you cut them all out? Also, choose foods that contain easily digestible carbohydrates like potatoes, rice, lettuce, bananas, grapes, oranges, and yogurt. Sometimes you need to eat smaller meals or less of those foods that cause you a lot of gas. Why do some farts smell worse than others? Most gas is odorless. Smelly gas can be caused by various factors, some sulfur-rich vegetables like broccoli and cabbage. Sulfur is a natural compound that smells like rotten eggs. You may also have a food intolerance. For example, people with lactose intolerance cannot break down lactose which will be fermented by bacteria in the intestine. Or celiac disease, an autoimmune disease where there is an immune response to the gluten protein, leading to intestinal inflammation, poor absorption, and flatulence, diarrhea, and weight loss. The bad smell can be caused by bacteria, a virus you've contracted, or an antibiotic you've taken. Also, in cases of constipation, where stool remains in the intestine for a long time, increasing the smell, and in cases of intestinal cancer. Can excessive gas be alerting to another disease? It can. If your diet doesn't contain a large amount of carbohydrates, and you don't swallow excessive air, your gas may be caused by a medical condition. Gastroenteritis. Lactose intolerance. Irritable bowel syndrome. Fatty liver disease. 
Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, diabetes, celiac disease, pancreatitis, dumping syndrome, gastroesophageal reflux, ulcers, and even cancer. Let's go to the 10 recommendations to improve gas and bloating. 1. Eat more slowly and chew better. Most of the gas in your body comes from swallowed air, not intestinal bacteria. When you eat quickly, you swallow much more air than when you eat slowly. Eating quickly also makes you eat more. Pay attention to the food, try to chew more times, and of course, avoid eating while doing other things. 2. Avoid carbonated drinks. Sodas, sparkling water, beer. They will not only produce burps, but many of these bubbles will also pass through your digestive tract. 3. If you smoke, quit smoking. Every time you inhale a cigarette or a cigar, you swallow air. Also, smoking increases the risk of cancer of the mouth, stomach, intestines, lungs. Quit smoking now. 4. Avoid chewing gum. Chewing gum makes you swallow much more air than not chewing it. If you have excessive gas, avoid chewing gum, and you'll improve a lot. Now, let's move on to the recommendations to produce less gas or eliminate it more easily. 5. Reduce gas-producing foods. From the list I mentioned, some may be the culprits of your excess gas. Many are part of a healthy diet, so you probably don't need to eliminate them entirely, but you can eat less of them. 6. Make sure you don't have food intolerances. You can do this by asking your doctor for blood tests or eliminating some foods from your diet. Do you think you have lactose intolerance? Eliminate milk, cheese, yogurt, and all dairy products and see what happens. Did it improve? Then you probably have an intolerance or an allergy. If it didn't improve, then it's not that. You can do the same with gluten. Eliminate bread, cookies, cakes, pizza, pasta, pies, and see what happens. If you improve, make sure you are not celiac, as celiac disease increases the risk of infertility and cancer. 7. Try probiotics. Probiotics are supplements that contain good bacteria. Sometimes, your intestine is colonized by harmful bacteria or has an excess of bacteria which we call dysbiosis when your intestinal microbiota is unbalanced. Taking probiotics sometimes rebalances this. Not all bacteria are the same, so find the one that best suits your body. 8. Treat constipation. It is very important to treat lazy intestines. It affects almost 15% of people, causing symptoms like infrequent bowel movements, excessive straining, hard stools, and bloating. For this, Drink plenty of water, exercise regularly, and gradually increase your fiber intake. 9. Eat smaller portions and limit salty foods. Making a very large plate can contribute to bloating in two ways. First, large portions can stretch the stomach and lead to gas accumulation, causing a feeling of fullness and bloating. Second, if foods contain indigestible or poorly digestible carbohydrates, the more there is in your colon, the more gas your body will produce. And salt swells. Reducing portion sizes and limiting the intake of salty foods like fries, fast food, and chips can help reduce bloating symptoms. 10. Drink peppermint and ginger tea. There is some evidence that drinking peppermint tea can help improve flatulence symptoms. As a supplement, it has been found to reduce symptoms of bloating and distension in people with irritable bowel syndrome. There is also some evidence that small amounts of ginger can help digestion, which can reduce flatulence. Important, when to see a doctor? A swollen abdomen, a lot of abdominal pain, frequent vomiting, frequent diarrhea or constipation that has never occurred before, unintentional weight loss you're not on a diet dash, heartburn, blood in the stool. Therefore, stay alert. Gas and bloating are common conditions. Maintaining a healthy diet, keeping weight under control, exercising, and having a properly functioning intestine can help reduce symptoms. If bloating is caused by specific foods in your diet, avoiding or eliminating those foods can help. If this bothers you a lot, consult a doctor or nutritionist to try to improve. Did you like the video? 
remember to subscribe. And see you in the next video.